What is pipe and filter pattern? Pipe and filter pattern is an architectural pattern that involves certain filters to filter the data streams and the pipes that connect them to produce a certain output. With the pipe and filter pattern, each component called a filter is responsible for a single transformation or data operation. Data is streamed from one filter to the next as quickly as possible and data operations occur in parallel. The loosely coupled filters that we use in this pipe and filter pattern can be reused and combined in different ways to create new pipelines. The pipe and filter pattern is prevalent in data analysis and data transformation use cases. If you have ever piped Unix command together in a terminal window, then you must have the, some experiences with the pipe and filter pattern. In fact, Java streams API are an example of the implementation of pipe and filter pattern but we'll come to that a bit later. Let's first discuss the pipe and filter architecture pattern and try to make some sense out of it. And for that, uh, a basic diagram of pipe and filter pattern looks like this. There are certain filters that are connected via the pipes. But for a more elaborative one, let's discuss this. At one glance, it looks like the batch sequential pattern. But there is a major difference between the batch sequential pattern and the pipe and filter pattern. The stages of a batch sequential system operate in turn, one at a time instead of in parallel, like in the pipe and filter system. So instead of streaming data from one stage to the next, batch sequential system usually write all data to disk for the next stage in the sequence to read. But if you can see in the pipe and filter pattern, these jobs, these filters are running in parallel. And this parallelism, this modularity makes pipe and filter pattern a bit different. Now let's first talk about the key elements of this pattern. As we can see here as well, there are certain filters that are connected via the pipes and there are some attachments. So filter and pipes, makes this pattern complete. But in some variants, we have the source and sink and even the pump element as well. So what is filter in this filter and pipe pattern or pipe and filter pattern? Filter is a component that reads data, transforms it, then writes out the transformed data. Filter may begin processing data as soon as it is read filters must define expected inputs and produce outputs. You must have a clear idea about what kind of input you are expecting and what kind of output you are going to produce via this pipe and filters pattern. So filters are the processing elements that operate on the data as it flows through the pipeline, as we can see here in this diagram. Each filter performs a specific operation on the data, such as filtering, transforming, or aggregating it. Here we have the remove bad data, score, normalize the score, create CSV, and then finally saving it. Then we have the pipes. Pipes are the connectors, these connectors. A connector which transports data from one filter to the next, preserving data order. Pipes have a single input and output and do not alter the data in transit. So we can say that pipes are the communication channels that connect the filters together. They are used to pass data from one filter to the next in the pipeline. But other than pipes and filters, in some variants of this architectural pattern, we have source, sink and pump elements as well. The source is the starting point of the pipeline. It is where the job, where the data enters the pipeline and it typically represents an external data source, such as a file or a network socket. And sync is the end point of the pipeline. It is where the processed data exits the pipeline. 
and it typically represents an external data destination such as a file or a database. As in this diagram, the job source, any external source from your getting your job or your data is the source and the final form where you are saving it or exiting from the pipeline is your sink. Then we have the pump. The pump is responsible for pushing the data to the pipeline. It reads the data from the source and passes it to the filters to the sink. These elements work together to create a data processing pipeline that can be easily extended, modified, and scaled. And by breaking down the processing into small independent filters, the pipe and filter pattern enables developers to create highly modular and reusable systems that can be customized to meet different processing requirements. Other than these elements, there are relations as well. Relations are the attachments that connects the output of one filter with the input of another by way of a pipe. Now you must be wondering that what are the possible rules for using this pattern. So pipes can only connect filters with compatible inputs and outputs. That's why your input and output should be known in advance. What kind of input you are expecting, what kind of output you are going to produce. Filters should be completely independent of one another and have no knowledge of upstream or downstream filters. That is to maintain the modularity of this architectural pattern. Your filters should not get affected by each other. So what are the strengths and weaknesses? We can count performance, reusability, and modifiability, modularity as the strength of this architecture pattern. And weaknesses can be that this system, the system that are based on such a pattern are not that interactive and cannot include a user interface without modifying the pattern. Reliability is not specifically promoted by the pattern but can be designed in by introducing filters to handle error cases. There are some issues with reliability if proper use cases are not being configured in the error handling. A naive implementation of, of this pattern can harm the performance because having many filters running in parallel can be computationally quite expensive for you. But overall, the pipe and filter pattern used to process a stream of data such as text file image data types. And the key idea behind this pattern is to decompose a complex system into smaller, more manageable components. Each filter is responsible for a specific processing task and filters can be combined and reconfigured in different ways. So one of the key advantage is that it promotes the modularity and reusability because filters can be easily added or removed from the pipeline without affecting the other filters. This pipeline architecture, which makes it possible to process data in parallel can improve the performance and reduce the processing times to a significant level. Now going back to the Java stream example, Java streams are an implementation of the pipe and filter pattern. The Java stream API provides a set of functional interfaces and methods that allow developers to process streams of data in a declarative and composable way. As we know that in Java stream, the data is represented as a stream of elements, which can be any Java object. Then the stream is processed by a sequence of intermediate operations, which are filters that transform the stream elements. And then finally, we have a terminal operation, which produces a final result or side effect we can see. So the intermediate operations are connected by the pipes which pass the stream elements from one operation to the next. Like here in this code, the numbers list is first converted into a stream by using the stream method. The stream is then filtered to keep only the even numbers, the numbers that are divisible by two and their remainder is zero. 
The resulting stream is then mapped to an int stream using the map to int stream operation, map to int operation on the stream. And then finally, the terminal operation sum is used to calculate the sum of the remaining numbers. This code is an example of processing pipeline built using the pipe and filter pattern, where each intermediate operation acts as a filter and the pipes connect the filters to create a data processing flow. But generally, when we talk about the pipe and filter pattern, we talk about the broader architecture of the system. We don't talk about the arrangement of a particular API. So that's why it is not a very much cited example in the pipe and filter pattern use cases. But this is a live example that we use in our daily coding, coding habits and that helps to understand more clearly how this architecture pattern actually works.